Hello, I'm John Silvius, Professor of Biology at Cedarville University, and uh, this is my colleague, and he'll introduce himself. I'm Daniel Thomas, and I recently graduated from Cedarville University. The top of our poster was an integrative approach to characterization of Silotum. And basically, what we did, we looked at this plant called Silotum. Um, it's in the whisk fern in the Silotaceae, which consists of Silotum and Tempsipteris. Um, neither of them appear in the fossil record, so a lot of uh, debate of botanists has gone into the origin of these plants. Where have they come from? One of the early proposals was that Silotum is a primitive survivor of a plant called rhinophytes, which has shown up a lot in the fossil record. It also is rootless and almost leafless like Silotum. Uh, another claim is said that Silotum is a fern, actually, similar to Stromatopteris, and it has secondarily lost a lot of the fern-like characters through mutations. Um, recently, there's been some um, genetic sequencing of the chloroplast genomes, a lot of different ferns, and that has come up with um, a uh, confirmation of hypothesis that the Silotum is actually close to Ophioglossaceae. Another um, morphological study has come up with a conflicting hypothesis that so, rather Silotum is related to Equisetaceae, which is the horse tails. So to resolve this conflict, Dr. Silvius is going to explain more. So we have a very unique uh, plant family, the Salataceae. We have controversy here, all the drama that goes with the botanical study. And uh, on one side with the genetic analysis, uh, placing Salotum close to the Ophiglossaceae, the other morphological data, placing it close to the Equisetales. And so our hypothesis was that Salotaceae are not closely related to either of the groups, and we set about then to use a phonetic analysis which would look at the distances, the so-called phonetic distance from uh, between Salotaceae and either of these two groups. And we were fortunate to be able to acquire a data set, a character matrix from uh, the lab with uh, Schneider, Smith, and Pryor. It's a large character matrix which describes all the different traits or many of the different traits of Silotum and the possible related uh, plant groups to it. And uh, this 135 character uh, matrix along with uh, uh, 35 genera representing all the way from seed plants to uh, mosses to lyco lycopods to uh, the horsetails. And so we use that uh, matrix then to to analyze with phonetics to see whether there was distance enough to conclude that Silotaceae is not related to the other two uh, controversial groups. And one of the approaches we used then was with a, a uh, uh, phonetic analysis program developed by Todd Wood, uh, which he calls uh, BDIST, MDS, uh, which is a multidimensional uh, spatial analysis, and it also correlates uh, the phonetic distance, or as he calls it, baraminic distance. And uh, with that, we can get correlations then which would show the support for distance based on character differences or relative character distances. And uh, you may not be able to see from there, but the dark squares indicate positive cor correlations or close distance, whereas if they are surrounded by uh, open circles, that represents negative correlation of the character uh, sets. And as a result of that, we were able to separate out seed plants, the bryophytes, the ferns, and the Salataceae uh, in the general overall scope of those different genera. When we scaled in more closely and looked just at the ferns, fern-related uh, plants, Silotum and so on, we were not able to separate Silotum uh, and Tempsipteris from the uh, Ophioglossaceae and the uh, Equisetaceae. Very close, some indications there that we were getting close to it, but not a significant separation. So what we conclude is that we have a character matrix that is a good start and one that we can work with to help develop new hypotheses, to be able to uh, sharpen up the character definitions, character states, and be able then to test new hypotheses that may be able to address this controversy.